Hello and welcome to the New World Review, your source for what seems to be primarily Hunter Hunter, as well as occasionally other things, but not today, because we're diving straight back into modern Hunter Hunter events. And at this time, I'd like to hop aboard the Black Whale One to examine what's happening on the lower decks with our favorite band of murderous thieves, the Phantom Troop. Now for non-manga readers, you'll probably remember the last time we saw these guys was when they went to Meteor City and exterminated a band of Chimera ants led by Zazan, which actually resulted in Fate Han becoming the interim leader of the group due to an agreement made in Krollo's absence. Whatever the case, as it turns out, that didn't last too long, as Isoka was successfully able to provide Krollo with a Nen Exorcist to remove Karapika's curse placed upon him, which meant that Krollo was able to return to leading the group. Now, of course, Isoka did this for the sole purpose of being able to face Krollo in combat. And after chasing the troop leader, Krollo did eventually accept Isoka's challenge, and the two fought in Heaven's Arena, with Krollo completely dominating the Magician after having painstakingly prepared for the match by acquiring a fantastic combination of Nen abilities, some of which were borrowed from other members of the troop. And if you want to know more about this fight specifically, I do have a whole video detailing it, which I'll link in the description. But for the purpose of moving on here, essentially Krollo was able to kill Hisoka, after which point he announced the troop's next mission, which, as with everyone else involved in the current arc, has to do with the Kakin Empire. So quick reminder here, the King of Kakin, Nasubihu Igoro, was boldly planning a voyage to the Dark Continent in order to settle there and reap the incredible benefits that the land has to offer. In this task, he is bringing along what seems to be the entirety of the royal family, as well as the vast treasures of the empire. And this is the part that really struck Krollo, seeing this as a perfect opportunity to make one hell of a big score. And so Krollo then arranged for the troop as it stands to sneak aboard the Black Whale One, bound for the Dark Continent. Although once again, in reality, it was actually bound for the New Continent, which is a separate land mass that the Hunter Association and the original V5 nations are going to pretend is the Dark Continent, dropping off the Kharkin Empire, and then proceeding onwards without them. Regardless, Krollo conveyed this information to Shalnok, a troop member whose Nen ability he had to borrow in order to face Isoka. Krollo went on to ask if Shalnok needed it back, which was met with a regrettably casual reply from Shalnok, because in truth, he may have needed that power, but it was far too late for him regardless, because immediately after communicating with Krollo, Shalnok was murdered, by Hisoka. And this is because Hisoka had managed to program his bungee gum Hatsu to revive him after death, thus invoking post-mortem Nen and having somewhat of an epiphany as a result, deciding that the time for playing games was over and that from now on, he would kill any member of the Phantom Troop on sight. And he further made good on this by killing Kotopi. Now these two were very important targets because their Nen abilities being Black Voice and Gallery Fake respectively, formed a major part of Krollo's strategy in taking Hisoka down. So the deaths of Shanok and Kotopi mean that Krollo has more than likely lost lost access to those Hatsu, and thus he will not be able to repeat his performance against Hisoka a second time. Very importantly though, Hisoka goes on to say two down, 10 to go. A fascinating number because at this point in time, the Phantom Troop, to our knowledge, had less than 10 members remaining after the loss of Sharnok and Kotopi. And amongst them were, of course, the usual suspects, Finks, Franklin, Feitan, Nobunaga, Bonolanov, Shizuku, Krolo, and Machi. And actually, I want to briefly pause on Machi though, because fun fact, originally Togashi had planned to kill her at this point, which makes a lot of sense because she is on Hisoka's list, and she was the first person Hisoka encountered after being revived. However, in what he claims to be a storytelling hunch, Togashi decided to veto his original decision and leave Machi alive. With the technical reasoning being that Hisoka would have needed someone to act as a messenger for his intentions with the troop, but in reality, it was just him thinking that down the line, Hisoka and Machi would have a far more intriguing conclusion. As for whether or not he's thought of what that will be at this point, well, that's unknown, but there you have it. And there we have a Machi. For now. We're still missing two members currently though, one of which is Kalito Zoldik, an often forgotten about member of the troop who joined during the Greed Island arc, allegedly to somehow use this as an opportunity to get his brother back. As for which brother Kalito is referring to, it's largely unknown and a pondersome discussion for an entirely separate video. But during the Succession War arc, Kalito is still an active member of the troop, occupying Hisoka's previous number four position. But Kalito is not the only Zoldik within the troop these days, as rather surprisingly, Ilumi has also joined them temporarily. Although it should be noted that he has only done so by Hisoka's request. I mean, well, I say request, it was more of a commission. Look, basically, Hisoka hired Illumi to kill him. And so as part of that, he has joined the ranks of the Phantom Troop, assuming the number 11 position, which was previously held by Uvagin. And that there makes a mighty 10 members, all of whom gathered on tier five of the Black Whale to begin their search. Tier five being the lowest ranking portion of the ship intended for general passengers. Regardless, this is where the current incarnation of the troop met up, introduced Illumi, and then immediately separated with the goal 
goal in mind to simply find and kill Hisoka, whom the troop are convinced is aboard the ship, although we still have not seen him at this point in the arc. And at this time, I would also like to state that the Crawler we're dealing with here is vastly different from the troop leader we've experienced before in the York New Arc, or even earlier on in the Succession War business when he faced off against Hisoka in Heaven's Arena. Crawler nowadays is significantly more gloomy and single-minded, and at times seemingly only living for the sole purpose of killing Hisoka. So the deaths of Sharnak and Kortopi have taken quite a toll on him. Not that the rest of the troop is really any different. Each of them, bar Illumi and Kalito, have a profound drive to exact revenge on the magician, with Marchi in particular being in a very similar terrifying level of focus as Crawler. But with their goal in mind, the troop then split up, promising that the next time they all meet up, it will be with Hisoka's head. They don't go off individually though, we break down into a couple of smaller groups. So first up, Shizuku and Benolanov ask to join Krolo in his pursuit, primarily because they don't possess nan abilities that match up well against Hisoka's bungee gun. And at this point, we also learn something very interesting though, because Shizuku requests that Krolo use the lovely Ghostwriter ability to read their fortunes and provide some valuable intel going forward. However, Krolo reveals that this ability has disappeared from his book, implying that the original owner, Neon Nostrad, is now dead. And while this particular part is pure speculation, it would make a lot of sense if Hisoka was the one responsible for her demise, because he was well aware of this ability and the potential dangers it could pose to him taking on the entire troop at once. In any case, Krolo, Shizuku, and Bonolanov do successfully move on and are currently on tier four of the Black Whale. We also have another trio formation roaming around, consisting of Feitan, Finks, and Nobunaga, who immediately head to an onboard warehouse in order to acquire their weapons, which were smuggled aboard, being Nobunaga's sword and Feitan's umbrella. And this is where we start to get embroiled in some mafia business. And just to quickly summarize this aspect of the arc, there are three great mafia powers aboard the Black Whale One, each of whom is effectively funded by a prince of the Kakin Empire. And I apologize in advance if I butcher the pronunciation of these groups. So we have the Cha'a family, who come under the jurisdiction of Seventh Prince Luzerus, the Heo Li family, funded by Fourth Prince Saradnik, and the Zhiyu family, who have Third Prince Zhang Lei as their benefactor. And essentially, each one of these three great families have jurisdiction of one of the tiers of the ship, with tier five being controlled by the Cha'a our family, tier four by Zhi Yu, and tier three by Hei Li, which is tricky because it means that movement between tiers five to three are restricted by mafia control. What further complicates matters is that these families are also struggling against each other. And in the case of Feitan, Finks, and Nobunaga, they got framed by a member of the Hei Li family for the murder of a member of the Cha'a family. Although interestingly enough, the Cha'a family became convinced of their innocence by conversing elsewhere on tier five with Franklin Bordeaux, who unlike the other members is taking a more passive approach to this whole kill Hisoka thing, with his logic being that the magician is actively trying to kill them, so if he simply waits, then Hisoka will show himself. But in the meantime, Feitan, Finks, and Nobunaga have formed a temporary alliance with the Cha'a family, with Nobunaga and Finks in particular, eventually volunteering to kill the head of the Hei Li family, Morena, as well as the assassin who framed them. For an axe group, the Zoldic siblings have teamed up, and the two of them swiftly made it to tier three of the Black Whale, only to be assailed by the military. Although with Illumi being a licensed hunter, there was actually nothing they could do against him. Instead, Illumi and Kalatu were confronted by members of the Zodiacs, who despite knowing that they were both now members of the Phantom Troop, also declined to take any action. Instead, Mizai Stom simply offered them individual rooms on level three, requesting that they cooperate with the current alert procedures. But this encounter did open up a very important thread of information because Mizai Stom was well aware of the troop's association with Karapika, who of course is also on board and currently serving as the bodyguard of 14th Prince Wobel. Mizai Stom went on to incorrectly hypothesize that the troop were present to take revenge on Karapika. And while that is not their intention at the moment, that could very much become a reality. If the Phantom troop keep making their way up the various tiers and become embroiled directly in the conflict with the princes, then this could trigger a situation with Karapika, who has dedicated a large portion of his life to exacting revenge upon the troop. So while neither party is aware of the presence of the other at the moment, I highly doubt that things are going to remain that way. And the last of the spiders is dearest Machi. Although right now she's probably the least interesting, as after parting ways with the troop, she has decided to go it alone. And all that we really know is that last we heard, she had made it to the general passenger room on tier five. How she'll be proceeding from here is unknown, However, due to the fact that Togashi is clearly saving something special for her, I have no doubt that she will be playing a very key role in the future. And that is rather annoyingly more or less it for the current doings of the Phantom Troop. They are rapidly proceeding through the entire ship with a presence now on three different tiers. And despite the fact that I did heavily emphasize the Hisoka stuff, after that goal is theoretically completed, they do still intend to rob the Kakin Empire of everything they're worth with a future goal of reaching tier one in order to do this, which if it pans out that way, would put them smack bang in the middle of the succession war. So I think there is a hell of a lot to look forward to with these guys. They're a nice piece of anarchy within the arc, a piece of anarchy that the mafia families are well aware of and very keen to eliminate in most cases. And I can't wait to see where they go from here. You know, whenever we eventually restart publication.
But that pretty much does it for the Phantom Troops' involvement in the Succession War. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produces in general, then please do consider donating to the New World Review Patreon, because the support of all of your amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if Patreon isn't quite your style, then please do leave this video a like, share or subscribe, because it also helps support this channel an incredible amount. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server, where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your thoughts on the Phantom Troop and the Succession War. This has been the New World Review, and I'll see you next time. When are you gonna run out of things to say about Hunter Hunter? Now you see this, this is a very good question. As a channel that more and more is turning Hunter Hunter centric due to the fact that it seems to be what the viewers want, I am currently facing the challenge of how to sustain a one series focused channel in the long term. So for any of you who don't know, I do have another channel called Grand Line Review, which is entirely focused on One Piece. But as a series that has, you know, over 960 chapters now, there is literally an infinity of ideas to talk about. And at the moment, I'm not quite sure if Hunter Hunter will turn out to be the same. So as part of helping to sustain a channel like this in the long term, I'd like to ask all of you, what Hunter Hunter related topic do you want me to talk about? Feel free to leave your idea in the comments below. Do you like Yu-Gi-Oh? Yeah, absolutely. I used to watch Yu-Gi-Oh in high school because an anime based on a card game was just such an incredible concept at the time. I was a big magic player back then, so it was fun to see card games dramatized and taken to the extreme. I haven't really seen anything beyond the first series though, because GX turned me off pretty instantly and I tried 5Ds, which to be fair, I did enjoy more than what I saw of GX, but it still lost me fairly early on in the grand scheme of things. Is fish a salad or box? Mm, you know, I think this question is very narrow-minded actually. Why can't it be both?